Okay, I'm still just working on getting the form all modeled with my base color. You know, it's come a long way from this. But I need to finish it up. I want to do the, the animal from head to toe, so I got to finish it in the tail. But what's great about digital painting is you're learning as you go. You're kind of not only creating an, a palette for yourself, a range of colors, a, a range of using the brush and using the tools that can be consistent. But you're also already kind of establishing how much focus and detail you want to give certain areas of your painting. So do I want to make the tail here as important as the face? Like maybe not even though there might be as much vid visual data in the photograph in both places. And this is where your digital painting can actually improve upon your photo reference a little bit. Because you can, in painting it's called knocking things back. You can kind of leave more in shadow in certain areas. Or blast things out in your highlights, just kind of make them more generically lighter, kind of like I've done in these highlights here. There's texture there, but your eye doesn't rest there. It's all kind of blasted out. And then you can use color or shape to bring our eye to other parts. So I'm going to use this color to kind of bring and connect the tail, which in the photo reference feels very separated. And if you're feeling like you're just recycling the same old colors, you can always go back to your, your color references. Or you can always just click on your foreground color and go to the color selector. And you can throw in something random. You know, this fluorescent green. I can throw it in here just so I have to react to it later. And that's not always a bad thing especially if I'm inspired by these really saturated references. But also your color selector can help just if you want that color, but you want it lighter or darker or less saturated, it'll be there for you. It just takes a little bit longer than holding down option because you have to say okay once you've selected. And one of the things you're learning is what kind of really deep, dark colors, like this purple, help a lot to give you the depth you need. And what kind of transition colors are helpful, like that red, which is really quite dark, but still very saturated and potent as a color, instead of just using dark gray or dark blue. So I'm almost done with this base color. Just got to soften out the edge of this tail. And again, I'm not going to erase, even though I've got a lot of excess marks here. I'm just going to paint with the background color. So different than digital coloring, where everything has to fit within your, your line art. Right? Here, everything can be fairly soft-edged. right up until the end. If I want, I can even paint a shadow underneath my creature. There's one in the photo. It's not a very extreme shadow. That can be nice. That fluorescent green really irks me, so it's going to get me to focus on everything more than I would otherwise. Try to resolve it.
Okay. I think that's probably enough focus right now on the tail. Okay, so now, good time to save it. Kind of filled in all my base colors. Huge difference, right? Now I want to get to more refined colors. So I'm going to lock my base color. Now what's the difference? Because this might look fairly refined. My refined color, I can go in at a, a higher zoom and I'll see what looked like a lot of pretty complicated shading and modeling really when you look at the pixels even at 70 percent they're just layered on top of each other they just have slightly softer edges and it's creating more and more colors but it looks like camouflage which can be cool but printed isn't going to be like the full finish that's super satisfying so now I want to use my paint in a way that smooths between it and gives me a more satisfying finish even when I'm zoomed in as much as 200% onto my pixels. So if I say view and I show it, let's see, show, nope, that's not it, <laughs> pixel to pixel, that's 100%. So that's what I'm going to see from the printout very clearly. If I zoom in a little bit from there, that's where refined painting really kicks in, right? And you can have these softer variations. To do that, I'm going to use the same brush, but I'm going to take it down to about 50% opacity. And I'm going to take the flow down to about 90. And then when I steal colors and I start painting with them, you'll notice that they blend a lot more with what's behind. And this is subtle, but it really makes a difference in the overall product. So if I turn off the others, this is what I'm doing with this refined paint layer. Now, one tool you can also use with this, because I'm doing all my blending just by kind of layering the different colors on top of each other at lower and lower opacities which is a good technique, but you can also use this other tool, which is underneath the gradient tool, and it's called the smudge tool. It's the bottom one in the drawer. And I use this tool, let me make my, my tool settings a little bit bigger so you can see in the video. I use this tool like I use dodge and burn, which it's right above in your tool. And you can also use dodge and burn you know, with digital painting. But what the smudge tool does, I make it pressure sensitive to size and I make it strength less than 30. And I can make it a pretty large brush. You can even do it with a custom brush and a soft edge. Is it will soften out and kind of push and pull your pixels depending on how smooth you want those colors to get. So like that, right? Versus without the smudge tool, a lot sharper. Now the computer is very good at making sharp edges soft, you know, Gaussian blur. That's basically what the smudge tool, tool is doing, but you get to control where. It is not as good at sharpening edges that are soft. So I like to just control it all with my brush. And if I want a soft edge, it's just because I use a lot of close contrast in my blending. Now what's frustrating to me here is even if I have the navigator open under window, it's really tough to see my reference. And so what I'll often do in Photopea, because I can't have the two files side by side, is I'll just have my reference uh, file up in preview. 
So I'll open it in this external program because I'm not trying to steal colors from it anymore. I'm just trying to look at it and I can zoom in on my primary, my primary reference just to kind of see where the stripes are in the face and do whatever works for you. And what's nice about the navigator is you can also kind of do steps in between where command plus and minus or the magnifying glass can go. Make, make my brush also a little bit smaller. Because now I'm more zoomed in. Time to really paint this cat. This is where I get to focus on details. Don't need to worry so much about the big picture because I know that's taken care of in my base painting. I know I have the strong edges and shadows where I need them. Now I got to work on those transitions and those softer edges. Again, I try not to paint with solid black or, or white. I always try to give a little bit of a color attribute to each thing. You can even add highlights where they might not exist in your photo reference. This is where I get to actually draw the mouth of the cat. All those little dark spots where the whiskers come out. Hint at it with this soft, refined brush. Got that fluorescent green to nag me, to blend with colors around it, give me something a little bit more dynamic than what I have been using. Red is always good at the corners of the eyes, kind of makes us think of the blood that goes through our, uh, through our veins, into our eyes, into our brains, makes it feel more alive. The more you take chances, the more you'll learn, even if they don't do what you want them to do. And all of our projects this semester, I'm giving you a little bit more creative control with each one. You have complete control to pick your style for this digital painting, but I want you to explore all of the, the depth of texture and color you can build through doing base color and then refined, refined painting on top. But the other hope is that it, it starts to uh, entice your creativity and your curiosity for what you personally can do with digital art. So that when we do our next project, which I'll be introducing next class, which is our final project, you get to really indulge some of that curiosity and try a technique or 